Hello YouTube family, welcome to or welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Sharita and in today's video, we are going to get into feminine fragrances, fragrances that are ultra feminine. Not really giving you a unisex vibe. We're not trying to smell like the boss babe with tons of, you know, woody notes. We just want to feel soft, feminine, pretty. All right, so without further ado, let's jump right in. All right, so this first fragrance, you guys, is newer to my collection and before I even start, Make sure you subscribe. <laughs> also, I want to let you know that all of these fragrances, with the exception of the one designer we'll talk about, you can save money on them. So be sure to check the description box below if anything, you know, tickles your fancy and you want to purchase, use the links with the discount code and it will be again listed in the description box. Now, all right, so this first one is from the house of Khalil T and this is a newer house on my radar. Um, I don't know if they're just new in general, but I think um this release right here came out in 2022 and it's called kryptonite now if you love fragrances like tardis you're going to love this <laughs> this has wonderful performance this is like a tardis with aldehydes that is what you smell like tardis okay so many compliments off their fragrance all right very feminine soft powdery almondy that too is what kryptonite is but you have the addition of these gorgeously done aldehydes aldehydes can uh pull a little mature to some people's nose for me it just depends on how the aldehydes are done if you like the aldehydes um that are in abracadabra 221 or tom ford's metal league okay we're, we're in the same vein as those if you don't like for me aldehydes i don't like are the chanel aldehydes they can be too much it's too many and I don't typically like the way they do the aldehydes. Um, I enjoy them in beige, but they don't even have aldehydes listed, but I feel like Chanel, they use aldehydes in probably 99% of their fragrances. So there are a little in there, that's why it's tolerable in beige for me. But I love the way the aldehydes are done here. So you have aldehydes and tonka bean in the opening, and then you have the most gorgeous middle notes of iris jasmine sandbag and cedar and then you round it off with a base of almond and sandalwood so if you love almondy fragrances if you do you know enjoy powdery aldehydic just super gorgeous soft feminine scents this is perfect and i feel like this is one that's going to be signature scent you can wear this hot summer days you can wear this in the winter and i feel like it's just going to be a beautiful fragrance that has you feeling like you are floating you feel like an angel okay um there's a little sweetness to it it's a little freshness to it floral um woody and this is just such a banging a fragrance and i'm so happy to have this one in my collection and this is kryptonite by the house of khalil t all right, so the next one is from a house that has really grown on me um, since being introduced in uh, 2023. I'm relatively new to the house, even though the house isn't new, but Ormond Jane is the go-to house if you want something classy. These fragrances, they know how to blend. They know how to make, you know, a woman feel like a woman. <laughs> like I said, class, elegance, um, sophistication, just, almost like ugh, regal like champaka is absolutely gorgeous so if you love the note of champaka i think you would absolutely enjoy this if you love fragrances like sean's um the chance line chanel is such a tough house for me you guys i even could not get along with chance because the florals in there they get indolic on my skin or the grapefruit i don't know what it is but all of the chances i have tried on skin they smell beautiful on paper for me, it's it's giving poop. Like it smells like baby poopy pampers <laughs> as it starts to dry down. And something is, that's what I'm saying, you always have to try stuff on your skin because as loved as that fragrance particular line is, it does not work for my body chemistry. So this one is giving me the vibe of that um, without like, you know, Chance can have like this fizzy kind of patchouli powdery, like that type of, this one is, is done a little differently. It doesn't quite give me that, but this is gonna put you in the realm, the same vein, okay? But this 
is beautiful on my skin, okay? I do love the um, the projection and sillage and everything like that. It's quite moderate, but I just love the way this wears. It's complimented. Um, the once my wore it out, I did get a compliment on this, and this is just going to make you feel like a woman. Very easy to wear. It's a little sweet. It's a little floral. It's a little musky. There is a green quality to it but ever so slight, you guys, ever so slight. So this has notes of bamboo, neroli, and pink pepper in the opening. The middle notes are freesia, champaca, and rice. I really don't get much of a rice note in here, but again, the way they beautifully bl blend their fragrances is absolutely gorgeous. You have a base of green tea, myrrh, and musk. So what I'm saying, it does have a greenness to it. It's not gonna be anything sharp, um, or, you know, challenging like a Divana note or a pedigree is green tea. So fear not. All right. So again, very feminine floral oh, and just a gorgeous blend. If you're looking for something that you can wear, you know, signature scent every day. Um, but I really think this will shine in the warmer months. I don't know how this will hold up in the cold. We'll see, but I just find this to be a very easy grab just elegant fragrance. That is how I can describe this to you and sum it up. Again, you can save, check the description box below if this one is on your radar. Again, this is Champaka and this is from Ormond Jane. Now this next one, this is not for a shy girl. This is for a woman who knows who she is and is not afraid to command a little bit of attention. This is Jump Up and Kiss Me by Clive Christian. And this is going to be the feminine version from their addictive arts line. The ecstatic. And this version of this is geared towards, um, you know, more masculine. And this one is definitely the feminine take on the fragrance. So jump up and kiss me. Y'all, I got this story time. Okay, I got a funny story. Put this thing on this week, war to work. Okay. Man approaches my car. I have my window down. He stops after two words interrupt his own sentence and says, what do you have on? Like, what is that? What is that? This is going to make the men go bonkers, bananas. Like men will absolutely stop and compliment you on this. And a word on the street is that this has pheromones in it. Okay. So it don't shock me that this fragrance just gets men in a tizzy, period. Every time you wear it, you're going to get some attention from a man, all right? So if that's your goal, <laughs> wear it. If that's not your goal, if you want to be bothered that day, if it's just one of them days, like Monica says, don't wear this, okay? Because this one drives me crazy, all right? So jump up and kiss me. This is your tuberose fragrance. So if you're a tuberose hater, this may not be for you, however, this is not a funky tuberose. It's not green tuberose. It is not a super challenging tuberose in my opinion. This is a bubble gummy tuberose, all right? And this is balanced beautifully with a very creamy and prominent lang lang. So when you have, though a lot of times, I'ma need <laughs> my really prominent white florals to be balanced with a yellow floral. It works every time. It calms the white florals down. It makes them not as sharp. It gives it a creaminess. This is so sweet, you guys, because the vanilla in here is singing. Not only is it sweet and addictive, it is spicy. There is a pink pepper in here that is singing to me and it makes it so sexy. So if you're in the market for something sweet, bubblegummy, creamy, vanillic, beast mode, and spicy, this is your girl. Does it sound like something you want to smell like? This is what you need. <laughs> All right. Um, this one goes in and out of stock very fast at Joma Shop. When I see it available, I always try to post <laughs> in the community tab because this baby is very pricey. We're talking $550 for a 50 mil. Thank God I got mine at Joma Shop for 200 and some dollars. Um, and I highly suggest that you try to save on this if you can. Now, is this worth full price point? Very subjective, but I can understand why this is priced at what it is. Again, the performance, amazing. You're gonna smell this on you 12 hours later, and so will he, all right? So again, I cannot recommend this one enough. Hopefully, we can find a link where you can get it discounted, um, but just one that you really need to get on your radar, you guys. Again, this one is Jump Up and Kiss Me, the ecstatic version by Clive Christian. All right, so this next one is the designer fragrance that I mentioned when I can't get a discount on yet, but I did post it. 
when it was on sale at Macy's. Hopefully you took advantage of it, but this is the newest release by Burberry and this is Burberry Goddess. As you can see, the dent is denting and I should have got a 100 mil. <laughs> This is a blind buy. I got it the day that I heard the perfume guy talk about it. Didn't know it was coming. Didn't know it was about to release. Just bought it. Cause you know what? When I see vanilla mentioned in, you know, the top, the mid and the base, I'ma need it. Like th th there is not much discussion that needs to be had. And boy, was this a solid release for uh, the house. Okay. If you're a vanilla lover, I think you would absolutely enjoy this. If you are a vanilla on the fencer, you may still enjoy this because though this is very vanilla dominant, this is not overly sweet, which I feel like is what turns so many people off to those really prominent vanilla fragrances. They can be very gourmand, very sweet, overly sweet, um, cloying. And I think that this does none of that. It has lavender, but the lavender is not OD. It is not heavy, sharp, stringent, um, like some people find Mon Guerlain to be. I love Mon Guerlain, but this is very different. So if you're on the fence because you think they may be too similar, fear not, they are not at all alike in my opinion. So with Burberry Goddess, you have top notes of vanilla, lavender, cacao, and ginger. You have a middle note of vanilla caviar, and then you have a base of vanilla absolute. So it is not short on vanilla in any way, shape or form. And if that sounds like your vibe, give this one a try. This one, it is designer, so it's not gonna break the bank completely, but the designer prices are getting up there. We're talking about $168 for a 3.4 ounce of this. So it is pricey, um, but do I think it's worth it? I think so just because I love it. You may wear it and you may not think so. So my recommendation is, girl, if you live by Ulta, Sephora, whoever cares, just stop in, spray it on your skin, give yourself a good overspray and see what you think. I feel like the cacao in here makes it special. The lavender is done to perfection and everything just kind of melds together to create something beautiful. There are no florals listed in here, but I do pick up on a slight floral nuance of something. I don't know what, but I feel like there's a floral component in here balancing everything out. Um, again, not overly sweet, but just vanilla done right, especially for a designer fragrance. I'm loving this trend of vanilla in the top, mid and base in the designer world lately. And I hope, you know, that they continue this trend because I can't get enough of it. All right, so next up on the list, you guys, is Pink Me Up by Atelier Deors. And talk about a feminine fragrance, you guys. If you found that Dom Rosa was doming too much, if the, the champagne was too much, try this one. This has the most beautiful, ever visit, like sparkling quality from a champagne and a blackberry note in the top. You have a powderiness from the purple florals and it's musky. And that's pretty much all she wrote. It's very simple, um, but I feel like it's beautifully done. This is one that was a slow burner for me. I, it was giving me like black current designer when I first got my nose on it. And I didn't know, like I was a little disappointed, but for some reason I kept wanting to wear it kept going back to it, kept layering with it, and it turned into a love for me. So this is why sometimes just giving your fragrance time, not instantly decluttering things unless you absolutely hate them, um, is the way to go. And I'm so glad I did not get rid of it, declutter it, because it's actually getting quite popular for the house now, but this one is definitely one I absolutely enjoy. It layers so beautifully with all the roses in your collection, I'm telling you. If you're not usually a fan of rose because you find that they can get a little mature, this is a very youthful rose. It's citrusy, it's bright, it's happy. Um, again, that champagne is champagneing, but it's not like OD champagne, okay? Um, if you enjoy scents, you know, like black currants, even though this is blackberry, it's gonna give you the same vibe, but it's fruity, it's enjoyable, it's happy, ultra feminine, and it is the most beautiful bottle in my collection, dang near, okay? Probably, I don't know, do I wanna give it that? Do I wanna give it that title? If not, the top five, okay? Top five most beautiful bottles. And this is such an easy reach fragrance that I think you will really enjoy if you love fruity rose scents, um, 
you know, that, that are a little powdery and musky. This is a go-to for me. And again, perfect for layering as well. Again, this one is Pink Me Up by Atelier Dior's. All right, next up is another rose. And this one is Rose Cherry from the House of Guerlain. I mean, the dent, okay, obviously we love her. But this one, you guys, is so, oh my God. It is so beautiful. It is exquisite. And it is a very powdery rose, unlike any other one in my collection. The way this house blends a fragrance, it just makes my eyes roll to the back of my head. Like, y'all, if you have nothing from the Arts and Materials line, you're missing out. I'm here telling you now, you're missing out. Scurry on down to a Saks, a Nemus, whoever has this line for you to stop in and sniff, get your nose on them. Pop up in there with some clean forearms and hands, and I need you to get this spraying because you're going to find a love from this line. Now, back to the fragrance at hand. Rose Cherie is a course a rose fragrance, but it is so like femininity personified because it is powdery. Nothing to me says feminine quality like a powdery fragrance. Flowers that kind of give you that vibe or that powdery feel and quality and texture are usually purple florals. So in here you have two. You have heliotrope and you have violet. So the heliotrope is giving it the most gorgeous like almondy quality almost. It's like almondy slightly cherried nuance and it also has tonka beans. So between the heliotrope and the tonka bean you're getting a slight almondy touch. It's very fresh. It's a you know a good dose of vanilla in here but it's not going to be like a gourmand vanilla. It's going to be there giving it some sweetness and this one is just the most feminine girl on in my collection, okay? So if that sounds like something that is your vibe, again, rose, you know, powdery, please give this one a try because this one is unlike any other in my collection and I really do enjoy this one. Again, this one is Rose Cherie from the House of Guerlain. All right, next up is going to be a fig fragrance. And this one has the fig leaf more so than the fruits, but I can't get enough of Castling. Castling was one that had kind of been on my radar, but I was afraid to try it. So when So Avantgarde reached out to me and let me pick any fragrance from the website, this is the one I chose and I'm gonna stand beside her because she is the bomb. When I tell you, if you love fig or fig leaf, um, scents like Overture or um, fig infusion, you're going to love this fragrance if I had to guess, all right? I don't like saying blind, but I try to get, get into a sax. I think they carry the whole line. Test this one because Oh, you are probably gonna be blown away because it smells so beautiful. I first got it, I, I sprayed it on paper. Don't do that, test it on your skin because to me on paper, this came off as very green, like too green for me. I love green, but it can't be biting, sharp, overly green, and it has to be done in a very particular way and they nailed it here. Castling is woody and green, but it is feminine, okay? It is very soft. This almost has like, a soft, creamy texture. I almost feel like if you you if you could imagine what it feels like to touch a cloud, <laughs> like that is what this feeling is in a bottle for me. So it opens with fig leaf, sea salt, and bergamot, and everything is just so balanced. You have lotus, freesia, and iris in the mid. So powdery perfection floral, feminine, like that That middle note is what is making it, you know, ultra feminine for me. Then you have base notes of sandalwood, very creamy, okay? Vetiver, not overly masculine at all. Musk and vanilla. This is like holy grail fig. Figginess done to perfection. If you're newer to figs, I would say this one just just try it, just try it. I, I, I don't wanna say you're gonna love it because I was on the fence about ever even trying fig, like because it's a very polarizing note. Um, but this one is just like, it's a 10. <laughs> this is a 10 out of 10 fig leaf for me. And the more I get my nose on fig fragrances, the more I'm realizing that I love the fig leaf more than the fig fruit. All right, so if that sounds like something that is picking your interest, just try it. Just try it because you may love it like I love it, all right? Again, this one is Castling and this is from the House of Mind Games. You can save 
when you purchase Mind Games Direct because there is no um, discount code for this house on Soul Avant-Garde. You can save 20% on everything at Soul Avant-Garde with the exception of Mind Games, okay? So again, be sure to check the description box for this discount code. All right, guys, so last but not least, it's going to be from the house of Byron Parfums, and this is the Chronic Rouge Extreme. This one is so fruity, airy, powdery. Um, it's just so, ugh, this is like you're floating. Like this one is so airy and gorgeous and sweet and gourmand, but not heavy. It's so uplifted. The quality of the bottle is absolutely gorgeous. So, and this one you have opening notes of whipped cream. And when I tell you this thing is whipped creaming, <laughs> you have raspberry, melon, pear, you have amber, spicy notes, and cinnamon in the mid. But don't let that fool you because this is not going to be a heavy, thick, overly spicy type of fragrance. You almost don't even get spicy because it is so well blended. You just know that this is some whipped, airy, sweet, delicious concoction and you don't know what's in it, all right? You have base notes of sandalwood patchouli, which is barely there, and you have white musk. So for me, this one is number one, sweet and fruity. Um, there is a very heavy dose of vanilla in here. This one is almost, if you could, if you have Minnie Mouse by House of Siage, think that perfume, but lighter, airier, not as thick and sweet and dense. If you feel like that one was too much, this one's gonna be right up your alley. It's almost like if you took something like the ambery quality of that Baccarat Rouge and the, the transparent sweetness of it, and you paired it with um, you know whipped cream and raspberries, um, melon, like that is the vibe this one is giving. I'm not trying to compare it to Baccarat, but I wanna give you the idea of how the amber is gonna come across because amber can definitely be something heavy, or um, syrupy, this is not that at all. Again, very whipped. Very whipped, fruity, beautiful, beautiful fragrance. I feel like this is when I just love to overspray and you get compliments. Like I was, I wore this a couple weeks ago to the movie theater. As I'm approaching, the lady smiled and she was like, wow, you, you all smell good. Me and my daughter, we both had this on. And um, yeah, it's just a love for me and I can't wait to get my notes on more from this house because I feel like, even though I've known about this house forever, I could I would look at the notes and I could never decide on which fragrance I wanted to try. So the house just as a whole went over my head, you know, slipped under the radar, but we're back, all right? We have another one in a row and I can't wait to try that one. This one was gifted to me by the brand, but you know, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna give you the truth either way. And this one is a love for me, all right? So again, this one is the Chronic Rouge Extreme and this is by Byron Parfums. You can save 10% check that description box. All right, guys, so that is our video for today. Make sure that you drop me a comment below. Let me know some of your favorite feminine fragrances. Perfumes you put on to make you feel like a girl, a woman, um, just ultra feminine, all right? I love our fragrances like this. And make sure that you are subscribed to the channel. Be sure notification bell is turned on. And last but not least, give the video a big thumbs up as it helps us to continue to grow. I wanna thank you for your continued support. And you know what? I love you all, YouTube. I will catch you guys on the next one.